Go Buen here. Jing Yuan hasn't always been favoured online despite strong performances in the endgame, but with the release of Topaz, strong cleansing solo sustains, and the new Grand Duke set, he's definitely on a winning streak, so it's time to update his guide. I won't talk too much about his kit since he's been out for a while, but I'll explain some important details a lot of people don't know about, and then discuss his best relics, Lycones, and main stats, as well as discuss how much speed he needs. I'll finish with pros and cons, rotations, and synergies and teams. We'll be looking at the new relics and plane ornaments, as well as the new units that have come out since his release, and even take a quick look at Hanya revealed in a trial. If you're a Jing Yuan main, let me know below, and if you like this guide, let me know with a like and sub, and let's begin. So Jing Yuan is a 5-star Lightning Erudition unit, the DPS class that specializes in raw AoE damage. At level 80, his base HP is 1164, his base attack is a very high 698, and his base defense is 485. He unfortunately has a low speed of 99 and a decently high energy cost of 130. Prioritize his talent, then skill and ultimate, and basics do not need to be leveled. We will focus on fully explaining his talent, which is his most important factor and where most of his damage comes from. He will summon Lightning Lord, a unit that has its own action in the action order but won't move if Jing Yuan dies or is crowd controlled when Lightning Lord is supposed to take his action. It has a base speed of 60 during the fight as well as 3 hits per action, which are blast attacks he does when he takes his turn. These blast attacks hit 3 targets per hit stack that Lightning Lord has, with the central target taking more damage and the target being a random enemy each hit. This whole attack counts as a single follow up attack too. At 3 hits, this is very slow and weak so we will use his skill and ultimate in order to gain stacks for this Lightning Lord. So Jing Yuan's skill and ultimate are AoE damaging abilities, and will grant 2 and 3 Lightning Lord hit stacks respectively. Every stack Lightning Lord gains gives him 10 speed and 1 extra hit on his go. Therefore using your skill for example will now make Lightning Lord 80 speed and have 5 hits. If you skill again, he'd now have 100 speed and 7 hits. He has a max of 10 stacks, equal to 2 skill uses and an ultimate. So we want to ideally go twice before Lightning Lord in order to get 2 skills off before he goes, maximizing our potential every Lightning Lord attack. His speed is dependent on when Jing Yuan gives him stacks, and so randomly putting speed on Jing Yuan doesn't do much for his main damage, since the speed he wants is relative to his Lightning Lord's increased speed, and that will change on his own speed. Is a bit of a puzzle, but that's why theory crafters are here, and we'll talk about his speed needs in the stats section. One final note for his talent is that it's a bounce attack as well as being a blast, and a key part of bounce attacks people might not know about is that they focus non zero HP enemies during the attack. So people might be upset he's doing no damage because the adds around the main boss are dead, but the main damage is that central multiplier on his Lightning Lord, and so if he kills the other enemies during Lightning Lord, every subsequent hit will focus the enemies that aren't at 0 HP, even if the 0 HP enemies still show up when attacking. His traces give his Lightning Lord's next attack 25% crit damage if he has 6 stacks or higher, 15 energy when entering battle, and a 10% crit rate increase for 2 turns upon using his skill, or basically a permanent 10% crit rate buff. These traces are pretty crazy crit boosts, and he even has crit in his traces too, alongside some attack percent and death percent. As for Eidolons, let's go through them real quick since they're not for most players. His E1 increases his AoE power from his Lightning Lord. If it was a single target improvement, it would have been much juicier. His E2 gives his base kit outside of Lightning Lord a buff since it is lacking in damage compared to his talent, especially in single target. His E4 gives him some nice energy gains on his Lightning Lord stacks, making it finally give energy and helping out his high energy cost. His E6 gives his Lightning Lord hits a debuff application, making enemies receive a vulnerability debuff every stack up to 3 times, for a total of 36% more damage straight up on his talent's hits, but they only last during the Lightning Lord's attacks. It's a pretty major buff, but it's all the way at E6. So let's move on to Relics. His old option was the 4-piece Lightning, but that quickly changed with his speed requirements and the 2 Hacker as an option, for the combo of 2 Hacker Space and 2 Lightning. His newest option is now the Grand Duke set. The 20% damage bonus to his follow-ups, which are over half of his damage, is a great start and makes the loss of the lightning damage percent not as bad. The 4-piece makes him gain a stacking attack percent too during his talent since it's considered a follow-up attack. 
It is based on instances of damage, so it's an instant 3 stacks if it hits 3 enemies on the first hit of Lightning Lord's possible 10 hits. It has a max of 8 stacks, and can thus be maxed at the third Lightning Lord hit, which is pretty massive, making every subsequent hit of Lightning Lord have a 48% attack boost. This will also be boosting his kit in between his talent procs, so his skills and ultimates now get a 48% attack buff. One problem comments had were they were saying about his turn 1 damage being weaker since you need a follow up to gain the attack percent buff, but that's kind of why we have supports. If we look at his damage in the first cycle, it's still stronger than 4 lightning, even without that attack percent buff not being present, because of just how much stronger his talent now is. The only downside will be if you want to clear a first wave of enemies with your skill and maybe ult, but you don't really get stages weak enough for that in the endgame now. If you still don't want to farm the new set, that's okay, but it's a possible 8% DPS increase over Lightning 4-piece. It's 10% better than Lightning 4-piece if it's pre-stacked from the first wave. For plain ornaments, his best is Stills Inert Sao Soto, with the new Glamoth set only being 1% better, and only if you hit 160 speed permanently, which isn't happening except on a sus 2-turn ult Aster, which loses him a lot of needed skill points. For main stats, you want a crit body, speed or attack percent boots, lightning damage percent orb, and an attack percent rope. He has a lot of crit rate in traces, so ideally you get a crit damage body, but whatever gets you your best ratio. Energy rope won't be good on him as usual, more energy equals more ults, but more ults with way less attack doesn't mean much for Jin Yuan. For an ideal stat goal, you want at least 2.8k attack, a 70 to 140 crit ratio, and speed is dependent on your teammates. You might have more attack if you go attack percent boots of course, and your crit ratio can be boosted with something like Before Dawn. So onto the topic of speed. It is very varying, and if you don't care, then don't worry about speed. We ideally want him to act twice before his Lightning Lords, or at least act a lot of times during most of them. On attack percent boots in a solo calculation with some speed, he has weaker damage, but not far off to speed boots in the same solo calculation. You get much stronger attacks, but attack less, and your Lightning Lord won't be hitting max stacks easily. Ideally, you do get the good speed breakpoints for Jing Yuan, but if you don't want to, he still pops just less frequently. Jing Yuan has different speed breakpoints to others due to the nature of Lightning Lord. Using a solver, the speed needs for his teammates are the following. If Jing Yuan has no speed or advanced buffers, Jing Yuan needs 141 speed to act twice before Lightning Lord for optimal damage. If you have Aster and she ults every 2 turns, which she really shouldn't, he doesn't need any speed. She could technically ult every 2 Jing Yuan turns with a 3 turn rotation, but she needs nearly 180 speed I believe. If Aster is on your team and ults every 3 turns, Jing Yuan only needs 116 speed and 115 if you have E5 or high Aster. With Ting Yuan E1, you want 134 speed on him, but since she gives him energy, he can chill with less and just use his ultimate more frequently, so you'll get better Lightning Lord stacks without the need to take turn twice. Instead, you'll go for an ult after Lightning Lord goes. With Bronya, you can run no speed on him, and you want to go high speed on Bronya, not low speed, or you'll have no skill points. You want to hit 161 speed ideally on Bronya, and going too much higher might ruin this rotation. You will basic attack and then skill, allowing Bronya to be skill point neutral herself. Jing Yuan will take twice the actions every turn of his, so you will be more skill point negative overall, and you want some skill point generation to help, but this is very effective for Lightning Lord damage and stacking. Finally, we have Hanya, revealed in the in-game trial. She gives 20% of her own speed for 2 turns on her ultimate, and with an assumed 3 turn ultimate, you only need 124 speed on Jing Yuan if she's at 161 speed. The buff she gives varies on her own speed, so it will depend on how fast you build her, and we don't know her eyelons, which may give her duration increases or speed increases to allies. So this is theoretical for now. Lycone's his best will be Before Dawn, completely made for him, but being a really nice Lycone in general. Peaceful Day S5 comes in next, benefiting his whole kit with damage percent, which he lacks a lot of. Milky Way, Breakfast, Genius's Repose are all great options as well, and Birth of Self is quite weak despite benefiting his highest damage profile, and it's only a great option in single target, where his talent damage is more substantial over skill and ultimate. Now, for rotations, he will just be spamming that skill. 
With 4 skills and an easy kill, that's a 4 turn rotation. If he gets 4 kills, that's a 3 turn rotation, but it will only happen versus weak mobs. Warhaw can bring it to a 3 turn rotation, but she will only benefit 2 out of 3 of his rotations due to her 4 turn rotation. With Ting Yun E6 and a kill, you can get a 2 turn rotation, and with a very fast Ting Yun, you might be able to get this more often than not. Finally, with Ting Yun E6, Warhaw, and a kill, you can ult into skill into ult, which is pretty funny, but you will overcap your Lightning Lord by one stack. Now onto the pros and cons before we tackle teams and synergies. For pros he has great AoE damage, and he can do full AoE on his skill and ultimate, which not all erudition can do on their skill. Meaning big waves of enemies are nothing to him, unlike for non zela hunt units that struggle. He also has single target power, blast power, and AoE power due to the nature of his Lightning Lord, so he's quite universal. His single target isn't jaw dropping, but with heavy support power he can definitely do enough. Finally, he has great multipliers and self crit buffs on top for a great base kit worth of damage further improved by those supports. For cons, we have the backloaded essence of his damage. Over half of his damage is tied to his Lightning Lord. It doesn't mean he can't zero cycle, but it does mean he doesn't have the instant impact of others. We also have the crowd control issue. He doesn't get to use Lightning Lord when CC'd, and so without an on demand cleanse or CC immunity, he does struggle in damage, since Lightning Lord will reset his action value. Finally, we have the random targeting of his Lightning Lord. It may avoid 0 HP targets, but there's still the case of shielded enemy in niche cases, and sometimes you want to hit a specific enemy, not those weak side enemies. For synergies, we have the units listed in the speed stat section for obvious reasons. So, Ting Yun is amazing for those lightning damage percent bonuses which he lacks a ton of. Planetary Rendezvous, the Pentaconi set, or just her damage percent from her ultimate is massive for him, and the bonus damage procs are great too. They scale off of the DPS's lightning damage percent, which is perfect since he's a lightning DPS. Her energy is also amazing for getting those alt stacks or lightning lord, and her high buff duration and cycling mean big damaging talents and lots of skill points. Asta is great for speed to get those turns in before Lightning Lord, and the attack percent boost is great too of course. Her buffs can also buff dual DPS pretty well on top, and overall benefits Topaz really nicely when you do run her alongside Jing Yuen. Ronya is amazing for damage amp in general, and also easily getting those 2 turns before Lightning Lord, but her 1 turn duration skill buff will not apply to Lightning Lord. So unless you're rocking E6 Bronya, you lose a bit of damage in return for many more actions, which is still amazing of course. Anya may be very interesting due to her generating skill points somewhat, or at least giving big buffs whilst being skill point neutral. We'll have to wait till she comes out properly. The speed increase should be great for Jin Yuen hitting those thresholds, and she can buff dual DPS comps, so for Topaz Jin Yuen teams, she could be great, and maybe Eidolons can further scale Hanya to be a beast. We of course have Topaz as an amazing synergy with Jing Yuen, compensating for his weaker single target, where she can become the main carry and save the team's damage. Her 50% vulnerability is also just 50% more damage straight up from his talent on a single target, which is crazy to have. Topaz synergies aren't always about how many numby attacks you can get, but about how strong she can buff and compensate for a main carry too. For sustains, La Watcher, Huo Huo, and Fu Xuan are of course his best. We will evaluate their buffs, skill point generation, and out of turn cleanse power. The Watcher will generate the most skill points and can cleanse Jing Yuan if he goes under 50% HP and he has his emergency skill available. He's good if you need those skill points. Fu Xuan has crowd control immunity, which is great for one block of CC, but if that CC doesn't hit Jing Yuan, or if the enemies have multiple crowd control in one Fu Xuan cycle, then Jing Yuan will still get crowd controlled. She doesn't generate as many skill points as Lu Watcher either, but her crit buffs are great. Huo finally is skill point positive and generates some skill points just like Fu Xuan, but of course not as much as Lu Watcher. She can also cleanse way more often off turn than Lu Watcher, and you can trigger it on demand with an ally ult or turn if he's below 50% HP. If you don't need the bonus skill points from Lu Watcher, Huo is amazing for him. The energy enabling more frequent ults is great too especially with Ting Yun. For teams I like Huo Huo, Ting Yun, Topaz and Jing Yuen. 
For a cheaper team, you can replace Topaz with Asta, and if you want to go even cheaper, you can try running a free-to-play friendly sustain. I wouldn't mix and match Bronya and Asta, but you can mix them with other supports, like a Bronya and Ting Yun. Remember to pay attention to skill point needs of supports, especially with a Bronya. So let me know if you're a genuine gamer, and maybe if you're pulling on his eventual rerun, maybe for that before dawn. Thanks to all my amazing members, thanks for watching, and have a good day.